Hello there, welcome to my views and news. Three new stories. First one is from the Oromia region where a top Oromo a politician has passed some very controversial remarks. Who is he? What did he say? Secondly, two assassinations in the Amhara region. Ambush and assassination are two main tools of the Fano of fighters. Two assassinations in two different zones of the Amhara region. Fingers being pointed towards Fano fighters. Lastly, Ethiopian a security and safety joint task force claims that a conspiracy has been foiled. Conspiracy to create unrest in the capital city. Addis Ababa. What was this conspiracy about? Who was behind this conspiracy? Was it a conspiracy or a peaceful right to protest which is being denied by the government? Firstly, viewers, uh, some Oromo politicians are part of the government. Uh, but at the same time, they are critical of the government. Two such top Oromo politicians are Taya Dandir and Hangas Ibrahim. Some say that both are supporters of the Oromo Liberation Army. They are very critical of Shimalis Abdisa's Oromia regional government. And uh, we have seen the two criticize government in the past too, while by then they as Minister of Peace, Federal Minister of Peace. But still he has uh, this liberty to criticize the government. Two remarks passed by Taya Dendia, both are very controversial. Firstly, he talked about the involvement of the participation of Minister of Justice in talks between the Oromo Liberation Army and Ethiopian government. When the two sides met in Tanzania a few weeks ago, Gideon Timotheus, Minister of Justice, participated in the talks. And if you remember, Gideon participated in the peace talks held in uh, Pretoria too, between the TPLF and Ethiopian federal government. Maybe that is why Gideon was chosen to represent the government in talks with Olatu. But Tayae Dandia criticized Minister of Justice participation. Maybe it's because he was left out. Uh, then the Minister of Peace. Minister of Peace was not invited. He was not allowed to represent the government at talks in Tanzania. Minister of Justice was made part of the delegation. Maybe that is why Tadendi is not happy. And he criticized the participation of uh, Minister of Justice in talks, which have collapsed. Talks between the Ola and the government. He is part of the government and he is criticizing the government. That government's delegation did not consist of the right men. Secondly, very important uh, remarks by Taya Dandi about collapse of talks between the Oromo Liberation Army and Ethiopian government. The two met uh, in Tanzania a few weeks ago. Uh, discussions were held. No agreement could be reached. Talks collapsed. Talks ended on a, a disappointing note. Both parties accused each other at the conclusion of talks for the collapse of talks. Taya Dandia is accusing the government. Uh, in an interview with the news outlet, he said, Jalmaro Kumsa Dereva trusted the government. He decided to, to risk his life by uh, flying through the airspace controlled by the government. He trusted the government and he was uh, showing flexibility. But hindrance came from the government side. By the way, one confirmation. I told you that uh, Kumsa Dereba was taken by air from Oromia for talks to Tanzania. Several said, several people said, Sajid, you are spreading rumors, unverified information. Kumsa Dereba was not taken uh, 
आउट ऑफ वैल लगा बायर बताया दें दिया टुडे कंफर्म दैट जलमारो ट्रस्टेड द गवर्नमेंट बाय फ्लाइंग थ्रू द एयर स्पेस कंट्रोल्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट इट मींस दैट ही वाज टेकन आउट ऑफ वैल लगा टेकन टू तंजानिया बाय कंफर्मेशन ऑफ माय रिपोर्ट सो Taya Dandia, who is part of the government, is accusing the government for the collapse of talks. Both these remarks about Justice Minister's participation in talks and uh, accusation against the government for collapse of talks are very serious allegations. Will the government take action? Which is not very likely, by the way. Taya Dandia is, I think, close to Ethiopian PM Abi. and sometimes the government people play good cop bad cop so while he is part of the government he wants to be representative of people too he wants to represent the opposition too because there is no other opposition by the way in in ethiopia well if of c other parties in rome are not allowed to operate freely so that then the wants to be the government and the opposition but government's official position is that it was ola Uh, which did not show flexibility. Ola made some demands, unrealistic demands, uh, cannot be fulfilled. That is what talks collapsed, and uh, responsibility lies with the Ola. This is official position of Ethiopian government. Secondly, we have two assassinations in the Amhara region within the last forty-eight hours. A long list of assassinations so far. Uh, prosperity party members, security officials, uh, militia members, militia chiefs—hundreds, uh, I would say—have been assassinated in the Amhara region so far. Obviously, foreign groups are behind these assassinations in most cases. First assassination happened in Gujum, Emmanuel Machakel area. where a police officer a police chief has been assassinated yesterday secondly amhara sant south wallo ajbar where a prosperity party uh, leader was assassinated by fano fighter his name is tisfao elbachio tisfao elbachio was assassinated because he was allegedly supporting the military operation against fano fighters actively supporting the military operation against fano fighters assisting uh, the operations in different ways that is why he was warned and then he was assassinated so assassinations ongoing while arega kabbed says that the groups in amhara um, groups are no more a threat to regional government and federal government while the regional government officials are being assassinated on lower level by these uh, groups in the amhara and lastly viewers ethiopian security and safety joint task for stop ethiopian security body says that a conspiracy to create unrest in the capital city has been foiled what is this conspiracy which the joint task force has foiled uh, i did a video few hours ago about the uh, launch of a crackdown by the government against organizers of a rally due to be held in addis ababa on sunday rally participants are calling for peace they are calling for end to war they are calling for withdrawal of forces from romia mahara but this rally is being portrayed by government's body safety and security joint task force as an attempt to create unrest in the amhara in the capital city is ababa the joint task force says that under the guise of this peaceful so called peaceful demonstration extremist forces were planning to enter the city ababa ammunition uh, weapons uh, have been seized too and around 92 people have been arrested so far in this connection now uh this is how governments launch crackdown on freedom of expression 
that whenever a peaceful protest is planned, they crush the protest, accusing the participants of working against the state, working against peace and stability. So this is not new by the way. Let's see what the if, if the government is going to share any evidence about the uh, plan by these parties to help infiltration of Pano groups from Amhara into Adis Ababa through the peaceful demonstration. But it's clear government is not allowing any protest to be had. Protest for peace, for putting an end to war, is being projected as uh, a conspiracy to create unrest in the capital city. This is what uh, government is doing. No signs of the organizing of rally on Sunday. By the way, rally organizers are all politicians, political workers. They are being arrested. Their house is being raided. Dozens arrested. And they are being accused of spreading unrest in the capital city and helping Pano fighters to infiltrate the capital city. Thank you for watching.